The U.S. Supreme Court ruled this week to allow sports betting in New Jersey. That capped a long battle led by former Governor Chris Christie to overturn a ban that's been in place since 1992. For more than 25 years, Nevada was the only place where full sports betting was legal. Now, that hasn't stopped millions of Americans from betting billions of dollars illegally on their favorite tournaments and teams. So what are the odds the ruling has a much larger impact? Scott Thuman takes a look at the big bet. If you want to understand sports betting, you need a professional. And few come with better odds than Ted Savransky, also known as Teddy Covers. Well, you're going to see the screens. I mean, look at this place, you know. Uh, I mean, they're, they're probably the biggest TVs you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And there's 80 of them. <laughs> He's been a Las Vegas fixture for years. A sports handicapper and career better, we met him just off the strip at the Westgate Super Bowl. When you're looking at all of this, sure. it's a lot to consume. I mean, the board right behind me with all the numbers on it alone. That's gibberish to a lot of people. Absolutely. A lot the to first, take in. The first time someone walks into it, the first time I walked into a sports book, I'm like, are you, it takes you like 15 minutes to, for your heart you know, calms down a little bit, and you can concentrate on one or two of the TVs as opposed to you know, all of them, and you can see what really is going on in the betting board. The Westgate is to sports betting what the New York Stock Exchange is to business, the center of the action. But maybe not for long. A new Supreme Court ruling has just cleared the way for other states to gamble on game. Meaning Sin City is about to get a run for its money. We want to do it because 65% of the people of the state of New Jersey voted that they want to do it. We could have uh, bets being taken in New Jersey within two weeks of a decision by the court. As New Jersey governor, Chris Christie led the fight for legalization, battling the major sports leagues and the NCAA. More than a dozen other states joined in. They've spent millions. And in New Jersey's biggest gambling town, so have we these two. Have that, but we're very proud of this facility. Mm -hmm. Bruce Dyfick and business partner Frank Rocco have made one of the biggest bets Atlantic City has ever seen. Not on a game, but on the business of gambling itself. Buying a bankrupt hotel and casino and pouring millions into reopening this summer. You'd never been to Atlantic City? No. Never saw the asset, had never been to Atlantic City. A little problematic for the phone call I had to make to my wife, my partner of 42 years, uh, and explain to her how we're making a large investment on an asset that I had never seen in a proper uh, town that we had never been to. Well, you'll have three, 400 people seating in here. They're so confident, even before the Supreme Court ruling, they started building a sports book at the center of their casino. So you'll see a video wall over here that will have 30 different panels. From a recreational standpoint, the groups of men and women that got on planes to go and watch the NC2A tournament March Madness launch, okay, that they don't have to fly five hours. They can take an hour ride because I believe that within a, a four or five hour drive or a one hour flight, there's 75 million people. And, and now they have a choice. They'll have a choice. A choice both the city and state hope will result in an economic jackpot, more visitors, and a chance to tax the enormous sports betting business. So how much would states get? Just how big is sports betting in America? No one really knows, but in Nevada alone last year, there was $5 billion gambled. That's legal betting. The American Gaming Association estimates it's really somewhere around $150 billion put on the line each year. Historically, the leagues have worried that bookies and big bets could taint the game. It's happened before. The most egregious case back in 1919 when the Chicago White Sox lost the World Series after players were paid to play poorly. And more recently, in 2008, NBA referee Tim Donaghy was sentenced to prison for betting on games and providing tips to gamblers. When you were an athlete, were you ever approached? No, no, I was never approached. I, I spent 15 years in professional football. Um, never did any time did anyone come to me and say, would you consider doing this? I've never had that happen. And I was the guy that handled the ball every play. 
Former NFL MVP Joe Theismann played 12 seasons and 167 games as quarterback of the Washington Redskins. He believes these days the sky-high salaries would actually discourage cheating. How realistic is the danger to the sport itself? So to say it wouldn't happen again would be you know, a foolish statement. But the possibility of it happening would be minuscule, especially under the scrutiny that exists today. When you think of um, you know, guys being bought off, guys being paid to do things, the numbers that guys are being paid today could you imagine how much someone would have to pay someone to throw a game? Would it be hard to keep teams, athletes, from wanting to put down bets on themselves? Well, I think that's, that's something for the owners and the commissioners of the various leagues to be able to sit down and look at their players, you know, and study a little bit more about the habits of their players. Understand who's working for you. Though now, in an interesting twist, some of the leagues that sued New Jersey to prevent nationwide sports gambling are asking for a portion of the potential betting pot. If you were to combine that with what each state decides to take as a tax, then Teddy Cover says they'll miss their goal. Here in Nevada, the government wanted, the state government wanted to make it sure that it was legal and regulated. So they were willing to say, we don't care about the revenue from sports betting. And they take one quarter of 1%. Uh, tiny bit. That's tiny bit. When you see states talking about sports betting as this is going to be a revenue generator we're for our state. talking about 6 7% in some cases they're proposing. Sure. It's not going to work. I mean, it flat out isn't going to work because the bettors who are already betting with bookies and offshore sports books will continue to bet with bookies and offshore sports books if they're not getting the same lines as they are getting here in Las Vegas. Good afternoon, 800 Gambler Helpline. At New Jersey's Council on Compulsive Gambling, Neva Pryor worries about the human cost, that more gambling means more addicts, and her organization should get a cut too. If I have more people calling, I've got to pay more money in my hotline number. I've got to get more treatment providers. So there are certain things that we have to do to ramp up to make sure that we can take care of people. I don't want to have to turn anybody away. I don't want to have to say, well, we have to turn off um, our hotline for certain periods of the day because we can't afford it. It's only going to get greater. If sports betting to many people is such a good idea, why hasn't it happened yet? There are a lot of forces out there that are traditionalists, and they say that it will taint the sport. But I think so many things in society, we have to move past the past and start looking at the future and the opportunity for what can be created if something does happen. Back in Vegas, Teddy says the states are right to swing for the fences. The beauty of sports betting, it cuts across demographics, it really does. Poor people do it, rich people do it, young people do it, old people do it. I did research, monkeys will bet and gamble given the opportunity. It is hardwired into our DNA. So to say, yeah, let's get this out of the gray area and bring it into the light is a really good idea. Not surprisingly, New Jersey is ahead of the game when it comes to writing laws and regulations, and the first bets could be taken later this month. Mississippi, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Delaware are likely to follow this summer. For Full Measure, I'm Scott Thuman at the Supreme Court.